Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com and uh, today we're going to talk about how to wire an RJ11 jack. So first let's talk about what in the world is an RJ11 jack. Um, well, it's actually called a six position, six conductor um, uh, jack. And the reason it's called six position and six conductor is if you look in here, they have little conductors in there, those little gold-plated uh, wires in there that are on a spring and everything else. There's six of them. And you can put in a, a mod plug like this that would just go right in there, uh, snap in, and it's a certain width and it only goes up to six wires. Now, if it's an RJ11, RJ stands for registered jack and it stands for the way something is wired back here. So if it's an RJ11, it's only dealing with the two center pins. If it's an RJ14, which I don't think anybody uses anymore, but just to let you know, it's the two next pins and it's put in like this. So this is an RJ11 and then you add your next pair and that's an RJ14. Totally different than what you see in computer cabling. This is not used for computers. Um, the computer jack is totally different um, than a uh, an RJ11 jack, and that's mostly what people call it, even though it may be an RJ14 or, or, or a different configuration here, they still call it an RJ11. RJ11 is for um, uh, digital telephones, not voice over IP telephones. That's totally different. They're computers. This is the phones you have it at home sometimes, or, or this would work with a fax machine or, or a modem, uh, things like that analog devices, sometimes a credit card machine, things like that. This is where you would use uh, this type of jack. Um, what's interesting about it, here I got an RJ45 here, so let's take a look at both of them. And um, when you look at both, you see on, on this right here, this is the computer jack and it has a lot more pins in there. It's also wider. Um, so the, the jack itself uh, the mod plug that goes in there, modular plug, that's what it stands for, that goes in there is also wider. You see the difference? has more pins. It's a, an 8 position, 8 conductor um, modular plug, and it just snaps into the jack um, when it's punched down. Um, and the same thing here, this would snap in there, and here's a silver satin flat uh, uh, cord that's used for telephones, fax machines, it just snaps in. Now the nice thing about it is both of these are called the keystone jacks and if you look very carefully you'll see that they're both the same size from from here to here, the same as from here to here, and the same from here to here and here to here. So the square on the outside is the same it's the size on the inside that's different. And again, this is your, your uh, what they call an RJ45, um, and, uh, and this is an RJ11. This is used for computers, voice over IP telephones, all sorts of things that you use on your network. This is used exclusively for the older telephones, the fax machines, the modems, the credit card machines, all sorts of things like that. What's nice about either of these is that they fit into the same outlets. If you see the exterior, as I told you, fits the same. I'm not going to snap these in. I'll show you later in another video how they snap in. This is a six position face plate. You can put six jacks in there. Okay, so let's look at the RJ11. Notice that it has a color code back here. Um, you really don't need to know pinout. A lot of people always stress out about pinout. They don't know anything about pinout and they don't know how to do it. Um, and you really don't need to know about that. That's a very small part of telecom. Because the jacks, it, it, the same here, RJ45 jacks, RJ11 jacks, they all have the color code written right there. And um, it tells you exactly what pin does what. So we're going to take this jack and we're going to put the cable in there. Now, what we're going to use is we're going to use a thing called a punch-down tool. And I want to show you this punch-down tool. This is the top-of-the-line punch-down tool. And it has a couple of nice devices. First of all, most, not all, but most quality punch-down tools 
uh, you can remove the blade. And when you remove the blade, um, and we'll talk about that in a second, you can put in different blades. Like this blade right here is for a different application, not what we're going to use today. It's for a 66 block. But in this case, this blade will snap in and lock. And it locks perfectly in place. I only lock one way. Notice it says cut here. And over here, it says cut. And if you turn it sideways, what you're seeing here is you're seeing a little ridge right there. And there you go, you can see it. And that will actually cut off the excess cable when we punch down today. And if you don't want to cut off that cable, you just want to punch down that cable, just want to push it into the jack, well then this is the non-cutting one. It has no cutting at all. That's used once in a while, not very often. Mostly when people are punching down uh, jacks or they're punching down patch panels, they're going to have that this, this blade here that does the cutting. And you always want to make sure that you cut on, a, on the place where you want to. You don't want to cut backwards and then all of a sudden the wire doesn't stay there, it just falls out. Um, uh, so anyway, what you have here also is you have an impact uh, thing. And I'm going to see if I can get it right there. There you go, impact. And um, what in that impact uh, thing, you have a high and a low. And that determines the, how hard you push on it before it snaps. And you'll hear it snap when I do this. And then, of course, you have this other thing. And this is blade storage. And what you do is you take your other blades, like a lot of technicians have the 66 block blades along with their 110 blade, you know, their 66 block, and they drop it in there. And then if you take it and you turn it, it drops down and it won't come out, you see? And then when you need it, you can switch blades, and it's always right there in your uh, hand. Th these are, this is professional level. This is a Fluke um, Networks one um, called a uh, D814. Let's see if I can get you so you can see that. And uh, this is a high quality one. Some, eh, some are, most of them are pretty good, but sometimes they're not made for everyday use or for a professional. Uh, when you're using it all the time, um, some of them tend to break. Uh, these are, will last longer than any, anyone else. Anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about here, and that's the RJ11 jack. We're going to call it an RJ11 jack. Again, it's six position, six conductor. I'm going to take a cable here. Now, this is, uh, I think this is Cat5e. It doesn't matter, really. When you're dealing with telephones, it doesn't matter what category cable you use. All of them will work. Um, they're not as touchy as computer cables. You can use Cat5, Cat6. Also remember that um, even though a lot of people pull Cat3 cable for voice applications, they call this a voice application cable. Um, if you get Cat5e or you, you have a Category 6 cable, you can use that. It's no problem. You can always go up in category. Um, you just can't go down. And uh, voice really doesn't have a lot of requirements uh, when you're using uh, uh, analog voice anyway, not voice over IP, but analog voice. Um, when you're using analog voice, it really doesn't have a lot of uh, requirements um, like computers do. Um, when you're holding these, these are, these are uh, telecom scissors from Platinum Tools, a high quality company. It's kind of cool, it has little stripping devices. You don't need that much anymore. It used to be you had to strip the wire and put it around a uh, a screw terminal and then tighten down the screw to get the jack to work right. But when you, when you have this, you hold it like this. Um, you don't necessarily have to put your hand in there. It's not scissors that use uh, the cut paper. Uh, but these little ridges here are for your thumb. So you really push down on it. Sometimes you can cut some pretty thick cable. This is a high quality steel. So it really works well. And what you can do is you, you want to start out, you want to score the cable. So we're going to score the cable, okay, and you're going to pull it off, and then you have four pairs. Remember, you only need one pair for an RJ11, so you can use all three pairs. Uh, whatever you want to do, that's fine with me. It isn't wrong, but you can't use four with an RJ11 because there's only six wires in there, so only uh, four pairs. And remember, in telecom, you always use... Um, uh, you always use uh, pairs. You talk about pairs, not necessarily individual wires. 
Okay, so you have the string. I just notched it a little bit right there. And what you want to do is hold your cable there, and you want to pull on your, your notch. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's kind of wasting cable. Why would you want to do that? Well, because if you notice, it's actually happened there. I nicked that wire, that orange pair. Now, with these little wires, you nick them, and you bend them once or twice, and they break. If you don't nick them, you can bend them a lot. But, so you want to get past the possibility of where you nicked it on the cable. So we go past it. We can pull the wires down. You can even pull a little more if you want. Um, you know, the inch or two of cable is really not that expensive. Um, and then you cut off your excess along with your, your string. And you have it here. Now, you know, you ever hear that saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Well, I learned a new trick, and I'm an old dog. So let me show you my new trick that I learned. And I learned it from my son, my 20-something son. He taught me this. And it was a cool trick. I never thought of it before. Now, this is computer cable. You know what you want to do is you want to get as tight as you can to the twist. But it's not a computer cable, right? It's a RJ11 voice cable. So it really doesn't matter. And it's not going to give you a better quality. It's just going to be pain harder to do it if you try to get to, to the very end of the twist. But what he did, which really taught me a, a neat idea, is he took this excess wire down here and he twisted it like this and it keeps it in place until you punch it down. Now we can do the rest of these if you want. I don't, and I'll tell you the reason why. It's because when you take a, a jack, let's say something like this, or a four-porter, okay? When you take a three-port or a four-port like this, Hey, maybe you need another RJ11 there. Uh, remember, the other end of this is going to go to 66 block. That's the way you do voice. Well, then you can put another jack on this one, and another jack on this pair, and another jack on that pair, right? So what you do in this case is you don't want to cut these right here, as some people suggest that I've seen. What you do is you just twist them around like this. You save them for the next time you need maybe an extra jack there at the same location. I mean, why? Why? Just cut them. Anyway, getting back to what we need to do. So you take your, your cut, your punch down tool, and remember you got the cut side right here. Remember that cut side. And you have your non-cutting side. So you put your non-cutting side on the inside. So when you punch down, see if I can do it this way so you can see it. When I punch down, it's going to hit that ridge if it doesn't hit my finger. I don't think I can do it. And it's going to snap. Did you hear that snap? And this wire will come right off. A lot of times I, you snap it more than once. And the wire comes right off. You see it? But yet the wire was pushed all the way down in there. I don't know if you can see it. wire pushed all the way down in there. And uh, it's going to be secure. And the same thing here. I'm going to, oh gosh, too weak. There you go. So, that little twisting at the bottom worked well. That's something new I never did before. I saw him do it and it made absolute sense. All these years of cable, I never thought about that. And then of course you got this little cap. You can put the cap on. It's not required. You can put the cap on. Like that. Then you take your keystone wall plate. And if you notice, it says it has an up there. I don't know if you can see it. So when you bolt this on the wall, that has to go in the up position. And this will only go on one way. So if I got it right, yes, I do. It will snap right in here. You hear it snap. Now, this is the proper way to put a jack on the wall. It should, this should be up. And the reason why is it's kind of hard to see. But your, con your contacts up here um, are on the top, and that keeps the dust and the dirt off them. So your contacts should always be on the top. Plus, when you're connecting, 
your wires, right, and then you're trying to un, you know, take them off the wall, you want to be able to reach underneath and pull out. See? So it goes in like that. And again, it won't go in upside down on these plates. It will only go in right. And if you follow the uh, where it says inside up and you put it to the wall that way, then you have uh, the proper um, orientation. Um, again, my name is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. Thank you for watching our videos, by the way. I always enjoy doing them and getting comments. Um, and uh, you know, it's always what seems simple to me because I've been doing it for 30 some years. Uh, I know other people find it interesting. I still find it interesting. I love technology. Um, so um, you know, I hope this helped you. And uh, uh, we do have all these products. Again, the difference between us and the other websites is we're not cheap, we're inexpensive, and there is a difference. Um, I do not sell equipment that uh, I do not use when, when we do installs for customers. Um, so I do not sell just the cheapest jack out there. What I sell is high quality, inexpensive parts. Um, like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. Please subscribe, I need more subscribers. And if you like this video, subscribe. And if you have questions, uh, please uh, put your questions in the comment section. I may not be able to get to them all, but I'll try my best. And I look at questions from time to time, and I do them on my vlogs. And at the same time, um, I look at the questions, and sometimes it spurs me on to do another video. So again, thank you for watching this video. You have a great day. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet.